It was all because of my big mouth I suppose. My cousin Beth had been complaining about how it was so unfair that girls had to spend so much time getting ready to go anywhere, mentioning hair, makeup, certain lingerie, and sometimes the silly dresses they had to wear, and also, not being allowed the freedom boys have. Beth was a real beauty, and I simply couldn't understand why she felt that way. After all, everything she named only made her look better, and besides, she never looked uncomfortable in any way. Beth also stressed that she was angry that boys could do so many things girls couldn't do, meaning going places or staying out later. The whole family was around the table when she said that, so when I responded, everyone heard it. I should have kept my mouth shut, but… I can't see what the big deal is Beth, after all, don't you girls want to look your best for us? And why shouldn't guys be able to do more than girls? It doesn't take guys that long to get ready to go anywhere, and we have the right to stay out later. Us? Mom, I asked. And the right, my Aunt Darlene, and Beth said at the same time. Just what does that mean? Us? asked my mom. Ignoring the be quiet looks I got from my dad and uncle, I plunged right in. Guys! Don't you think that you have to look nice for the guys? I mean, you make it sound like it's a real project to look pretty. You brush your hair just like I do, your dress is made out of the same stuff my clothes are, so what's the big deal? Isn't that what you're supposed to do? Look nice? Besides, we're usually in charge, so why can't we do whatever we want? I heard both my dad and uncle groaned in unison, then I saw all three women get the look in their eyes. Oh, so, you think it's that easy? Mom said testily. Sure. Like I said, what's the big deal? Beth is pretty anyway, so. So, you think it's easy to look pretty? Sure. Tom, Dad interjected. I'll handle this, Mom said, sharply, stopping Dad quickly. Why don't we find out if what you say is true? How? Like I said, Beth is pretty anyway. That's true. But I was thinking that since you believe it's so easy for girls to look pretty, then maybe you should try it and see for yourself how easy it is. After all, if it's as easy as you say, then you can show us. Me? Dress as a girl? No way, Mom. You know what, Thomas? I don't think I'll make that a request. You said it was easy, and now is your chance to find out. You've always been opinionated, especially about girls, which I usually put off to youthful ignorance, but this time I think maybe you should find out if what you say is true. After all, if it's that easy, then as the superior male, you think you are, you shouldn't have any trouble proving what you say is true. And like you just said, Aunt Darlene added, the material is the same, and you brush your hair like we do, so what's the problem? Turning to Dad and my uncle for support, Dad said. I tried to stop you, Tom, but you wouldn't listen. I cannot count the number of times I've told you to think about what you say before you say it, but since you have decided not to take my advice, it looks to me like you've put your foot squarely in your mouth this time. I don't agree with your mother's solution, but given this attitude you've developed lately, I'm not inclined to argue with her about it either. I don't like it, but maybe next time you'll be more careful about what you say to and about other people, especially females. Now that we have that settled, Mom said quickly, I'm thinking that in order for you to experience what it's like to be pretty, we'll to have somewhere to go. How about? Beth said. You're going to make him dress like a girl? This will be so cool. Then she added gleefully, I know. There is that big deal at the club daddy belongs to. He could go there, it's supposed to be a big party, at least that's what daddy said. But that's… My uncle never got a chance to finish his sentence when my aunt said. That's a wonderful idea. And just think of it. You'll have almost five weeks to get him ready for his debut. I'm not dressing up as a girl, I said vehemently and I'm positively not going anywhere dressed like that, and besides, my birthday comes about then. We'll see about that, Mom said angrily, but I'll remind you that while you dug this hole for yourself, I'll be the one to make those decisions, not you. You will do what we tell you, and if you fight me on this, if you make me angry enough, 
I might just find more inventive ways to get your attention, like have you attend your own birthday party with a crew cut and in a very frilly dress, and I mean extremely frilly. After Beth and her parents left, Dad pulled me into the den and shut the door. After I got a very memorable ass chewing, he made it clear that he thought I had shot off my mouth one time to many. Then he made it crystal clear that I was going to do what mom told me, and if that meant that I would be attending that party dressed as a girl, I simply did not have a choice. With his words, maybe you'll learn something from it, and I knew that like it or not, I was about to find myself dressed up like a girl, and I did not have to like it, only do it. The very thought of it gave me the shivers, especially when dad told me that I should not be surprised if mom decided I needed a little practice. Think of it this way, he added sullenly, just how long could it last? Sitting back in his chair. This attitude of yours, about girls and women, is getting really old, Thomas. You have never seen me treat your mother or any other woman the way you have. Lately you have started to be rude around your mother, ordering her around and giving her a lot of lip, refusing to do what she says unless I tell you to do it, so let me assure you that it's going to stop. Maybe it's that crowd you run around with, but we are tired of it, I know she is, so maybe, after spending some time in a dress, you'll think more about how you treat women. I'm not thrilled with her solution, but maybe she's right. You'll do what your mother says, or you and I will have a discussion you really won't like. Understand? Yes, sir, but. No buts, Tom. Five weeks isn't very long, and I'm sure that you'll do your best, won't you? What I mean is, I'm real sure that you don't want to attend your own birthday party in a crew cut and all dolled up to you? No? Then I suggest that you do what your mother says, including playing dress up, and I strongly urge you not to make her any madder than she already is. There's no telling what else she might have you doing, or how long she might decide to make this last. Dad never cut corners when he said something, and you always knew where you stood, so I had no illusions at all. I was going to do what mom told me to, and that was the end of that discussion. But at the time, neither of us realized that when he said I might learn something from it, that what I might learn by dressing up as a girl might not be exactly what either of us thought. Mom did not say anything that night about what she planned on, but when I went to bed, I stood in front of the mirror looking at myself. Naked, it was plain to see that for a 14-year-old boy, I had an uninspired shape. Arms that had not filled out yet, a hairless body that had not yet developed very much muscle tone, and a small but round, protruding butt. Bubble butt, mom called it. Like a lot of guys, I had let my hair grow out, and once I took it out of the ponytail, it fell across my shoulders in a mass of brown, with red hints and waves of modestly curly hair. That's when I realized that mom might just be able to do the unthinkable, and actually turn me into a girl. I was not looking forward to it, but after what dad said, there was virtually no doubt that it was going to happen, so all I could hope for was that I turned out so ugly that they would take pity on me. It was another whole day before mom called me into her bedroom. Shutting the door she turned, smiling at me. I know that you're thinking, probably even hoping that I would forget, or that we would not make you do this, but in the last few months you have developed some sort of attitude about girls. We're either stupid, silly, a workhorse to serve you, or should be nothing more than an ornament for a man. Well, none of that is true, and we, your father and I, both agree on this. Maybe, in order to change your ways, it's time that you see things from our side of the fence. So, starting right now, and I'll help you of course, we're going to see how you do as a girl. I bought a few things you'll need, so I want you to get undressed so we can begin. But mom, that party isn't for five more weeks. You heard Beth. Why do I have to get all dressed up now? Because you'll need the practice, that's why. Practicing how to be a girl was mentioned, and you cannot possibly believe, by any stretch of the imagination, that I would let you embarrass us at that kind of special event, do you? No, dear. You are about to learn what it's like to be a girl, and you'll have five whole weeks to become as feminine as you can. But just remember this. When you attend that party, you'll have exactly two choices, and believe me, they are going to be your only choices. You can be as femininely graceful as you can possibly be, in which case it's very probable that nobody will know who you really are, 
or you can clump around like a boy in a dress, which will certainly let everyone know exactly who you are, and if they don't get it, I'll tell them, and the reason why. It's your choice to make. After waiting a moment, and seeing the stunned look on my face, she said. Now, get undressed so we can begin. Seeing the determined look on her face, and with a sigh, I began to undress. When I was down to my briefs, mom handed me a pair of panties, and much to my dismay, it all began. After I changed into the panties, mom sat me in a chair, pulled the hair away from my face, and began with some makeup, making me do most of it myself, under her guidance of course. To my very great horror, I could see that with the addition of a bit of makeup, I was actually becoming what I thought was almost pretty. Then she showed me how to put on a bra, adding a pair of flesh-colored breast forms that looked about as real as I thought a fake could get, and they filled the cups of the bra completely. A padded panty brief, pantyhose, then a short skirt followed by a pullover top. The shoes were brand new white flats that fit me perfectly. Mom fixed my hair, clipped on some earrings and a necklace, then gave me a shot of her perfume. The lipstick she handed me was a dark red. Once I saw how I looked, I almost cried. I looked almost exactly like Beth and her friends. The pink and white plaid skirt was short, a lot more than just a little above my knees, the fuzzy white top hugged me closely, and with that padded panty brief, it seemed as if I actually had a shape. With my auburn hair and the makeup, I looked just like a girl, and worse, my hopes were dashed when I didn't turn out ugly. Instead, I looked sort of cute. I was awash in conflicting emotions, but mostly resentment. I really resented the fact that I was made to dress as a girl, but I also resented the fact that I didn't look so bad they could take pity on me. Mom was smiling as she took me by the hand and pulled me out of the room. Since we were the only ones at home I did not have to face Dad, but it was coming, way too soon by my way of thinking. I felt strangely odd, what with my legs sticking out like that and having boobs bouncing on my chest. Mom left me alone when we reached the family room, giving me the time to adjust to how I was dressed. Eventually I went to the hall mirror and looked again. In a strange way I was both frightened and exhilarated at the same time, sort of like riding a roller coaster. Everything about how I looked had changed, and that was frightening, because I didn't think it was possible. At the same time, there was no doubt that I looked as good as any girl I knew, yet the mere fact that I thought I looked cute made me feel a rush of unwanted exhilaration. The pantyhose made my legs shapely, something I never realized was possible before, the small breasts were exactly the right size for me, and with makeup and my hair done the way they were, I felt almost feminine in a way. Just when I was getting relaxed enough to cope with the way I looked, mom came into the hall and handed me a purse, telling me we had to go, I had an appointment. Appointment? Of course. You did make a point of mentioning Beth's hair, didn't you? Well, she has a girl's cut of course, so in order for you to find out exactly what it's like to be a girl, we have decided to let you experience the full range of things a normal girl does, and that means a trip to the beauty shop and a nice but feminine haircut and some work on those stubby nails of yours. Mom. Take the purse, honey, we only have about 20 minutes. Unwilling to leave the house, Mom thrusts the purse at me while at the same time giving me one of her looks. Knowing from long experience what that look meant, and knowing that refusing would certainly make my situation worse, I took the purse. Mentally, and almost physically, I fought against leaving the house, but mom insisted, and I soon found myself in the car, headed for a beauty shop that I had no business being in. When we got there, just walking across the parking lot after mom parked in front of the shop was about all my nerves could handle, yet when we went inside, I felt a little safer. At least I was inside some place. Mom and I were greeted like old customers, then. Kathy? I'll be doing you today. Let's go over here. Kathy? That was a girl's name. Mom had not mentioned a different name, so I was a bit shaken when the lady called me that. I just stood there, but she gently took me by the arm, and without a struggle, I was in the chair. Your mom told me that it's been simply ages since you've had your hair done, and she also told me that you weren't sure what you wanted me to do, so she made a few suggestions. Just sit back now and I'll begin. I'm sure that you'll enjoy the experience. 
As I sat there she began to wash my hair, which, to my surprise, felt really good. Then she began to snip at my hair, and as I saw the long strands falling to the floor, I wondered if she knew what she was doing. Then came the rollers, big and little, and as I watched in the mirror, my hair became one huge mass of curlers. Put under the dryer, the noise drowned out all other sound, so I sat there in silence as mom took her place in the same chair I had just left. As I sat there waiting for my hair to dry, a girl came over and started in on my fingernails, just like mom told me would happen. After using a sharp stick on my cuticles and some filing and sanding, she added some sort of white stuff to my nails, and when it was hard, she filed and shaped each nail carefully. After adding the reddish-pink polish, she put my hands under a blue light. Seeing my nails like that, and knowing my hair was in curlers, I knew that no matter whatever else happened, mom had made it unlikely that I would be able to dress as a boy for quite a while, at least five weeks anyway. The longer nails made my fingers look smaller and thinner, and with a girl's haircut, I knew right then that I was done for. All I could do was go along with what was happening, since anything less might cause mom to do something else I really didn't want. I could have fought it I suppose, made a scene maybe, but I knew from experience that doing that usually only made things worse, which is why I didn't say a word while my hair and nails were done. When the lady was done brushing out my hair, it looked fuller, almost as long, and very feminine to say the least. When mom was done, she paid for both of us, then as we left. Only one more stop, then we can go home Kathy. Do I have a choice? No but I'm sure that you'll enjoy it, and besides, you look just darling. Great, I said sarcastically. That's exactly what I say. I'm glad that we finally agree on something. That's not what I meant, Mom. Let's see how things go before we start arguing, okay? Whatever. Mom drove to the mall, and on the way, I saw you looking at yourself in the mirror at the beauty shop, so you saw for yourself that you look just delicious. To be frank with you, I had my doubts, but now we both know for sure that you look just deliciously wonderful. We're here to get you a few more things, and I thought that maybe you would like to help pick them out. Think of this as your first test, so just stay with me, and you'll be fine. Then we went inside. Positive that everyone knew that I was a boy, I almost never looked up, until I heard someone say hi to my mom. When I looked, I saw that it was a friend from school. He looked me over, smiled, then waved and walked away. Suppressing a giggle, mom asked me if I was convinced that nobody knew. The sad fact is that she was right. Glenn did not know who I was. After mom reminded me to hold my head up, she and I went into a department store where I found out just how many choices girls have. I had never paid any attention to girls' clothes before, unless a girl was inside of them of course, so I was definitely out of my element. Mom picked out a few skirts, blouses and tops, then she told me to pick out two dresses. My first instinct was to pick out really bland colors in order not to call attention to myself, then I saw my reflection in a mirror again. It was plainly obvious that no matter what I wore, I was going to look like a girl, so I went with colors that I thought didn't look too bad, pale blue and dark green. Mom never said a word, only adding a pair of shorts and jeans to the pile. After she paid the bill, she picked out two more bras and some panties plus more pantyhose. As we were walking to the door, she casually asked me if I wanted to get my other ear pierced. It would make things simpler, and with post-type earrings you'll have a wider choice you know, and when you quit wearing earrings, the hole will heal up, so why not? It was just about the only thing that made sense up to then, but I was reluctant to do it at first. As we stood there in front of the shop, I looked inside and saw all the jewelry, and sighed. Given the fact that I was about to spend some time as a girl, and already knowing the pierced ears didn't hurt, compared to the clip-ons I was wearing, I agreed, and we went inside. I left the store with a bag of earrings, a few necklaces, and a bracelet that mom had me pick out on my own. By the time we got home and we had put away all the clothes, it hit me, harder than before, even when I was in the beauty shop. I had skirts, blouses and dresses hanging in my closet, panties and bras in the dresser, and given the way I looked, it seemed that I had become a girl, all in just one day. 
Every step of the way something new was piled on to make me more feminine, and I had even agreed to piercing my other ear. Longer nails that were painted was almost worse in a way than having the boobs. I could remove the boobs, but the nails were there to stay for a while, and I didn't know how to change that. Mom had me help make dinner, then Dad came in and saw me. Other than the apron I was wearing, nothing had changed. I still looked like a girl. It does seem that your mother was right. You look just like a girl. Gee, thanks dad. Don't be too hard on Kathy, she's still getting used to everything. Kathy? Wasn't that what we were? Going to name her if she had been born a girl, yes. Since parents get to name their children, I gave her the name Kathy in order to make this a bit easier on her. Damned if mom didn't sound quite pleased with herself. When will dinner be ready? I have a few calls to make. Twenty minutes. I had expected, even hoped, that dad had more to say, maybe tell me it was all a joke on me, maybe even tell mom she had gone too far, but he left to make his calls without a word, and I started setting the food on the table. By then I was almost used to having bare legs and boobs, and quit worrying about that, my dad's lack of reaction the only thing on my mind. My new status wasn't even mentioned at dinner, and after dishes, I went to my room to play on the computer, which was way different with longer nails, but I managed. Mom came in a few hours later and handed me a nightgown and told me to get ready for bed. A nightgown? I didn't see her buy a nightgown. Positive that she would check, I began to undress, putting everything on the chair until I was down to the bra and panties. I don't know why I did it, maybe because it didn't matter anymore, but in any case, I left them on and slipped the nightgown over my head and crawled into bed. As I lay there I thought about what had happened that day. In every case mom had gotten her way, without much if any struggle from me, and by the time we had dinner, my transformation was virtually over. I hated it, but knowing how I looked, I knew that meant that it was going to be up to me to become as much like a girl as I could possibly manage, simply in order to protect myself. Since my parents, especially mom, had left me no avenue to flee from the oncoming escapade, I just had to do it perfectly just so the guys wouldn't find out. I would never hear the end of it if they found out. Mom had neatly trapped me into doing what she wanted, leaving me two choices. Become the girl I look like and maybe get by, or don't, and let everyone find out. Touching my new boobs, I recalled how I had looked that afternoon, which is when it happened. Mr. Happy came to life. I did what most boys do with Mr. Happy, and only later realized that my girl self had turned my boy self on. Of course, when I showed up for breakfast, still in that nightgown, it was obvious that I had boobs, which meant that I still wore the bra. Neither of them said a word about it. Dad kissed us both goodbye, which he never did. Always mom, and a be good sport, for me. Then he went to work. Go get dressed Kathy, wear the brown and white skirt. I'll be up to help you with your makeup. Why not the jeans? Because we have a few errands to do and I want you to get used to skirts before I let you go back to jeans. Now go get changed. I'll be up in a little bit. Once again I did my own makeup with mom watching. Getting dressed was easier the second time since I knew how to get the new bra on. I wore my own penny loafers, and once I had lipstick on, mom and I left on the errands she mentioned. First was the drugstore where she bought some makeup, lipsticks and nail polish just for me, then, as we drove away. I noticed that you wore the bra to bed last night. Yeah, with these nails and my hair the way they are, and wearing a nightgown, I figured. That you might as well? I nodded my head yes, then. That's good. It means that you are beginning to accept yourself as a girl. Maybe I can help you a little more, if you let me, but we'll talk about that later, when we get home, okay? Sure. How? You'll see. Mom made one more quick stop, but I stayed in the car. It was the shop she told me was where she had bought the breast forms I was using. Then, when I saw where she was going, I was ready to jump out of the car. As mom turned the last corner, I could see Beth outside her house, talking with two other girls, and my heart started pounding hard. Mom parked in front and got out, leaving me no choice but to do the same or look dorky on top of everything else. 
Beth looked confused for just a moment. Beth, why don't you introduce Kathy to your friends while I go talk to your mother? Leaving me standing there like that, I was alone without mom nearby for the very first time. Hi Kathy. This is Carol and Lisa. Hi, they said in unison. Beth was very quick, telling them that I was new in the area, and they seemed to accept me for what I looked like, a girl, just like them, and were very friendly. They left a bit later, and Beth and I went in the house. When my aunt saw me she jumped up, then hugged me tightly. I knew it! I knew that you would look just as cute as could be, and I was right. Can Kathy come with us tonight? We were going to hit the mall and maybe later get a soda? Who is us? Mom asked. Carol, Lisa, and me. I suppose, as long as Kathy is back here by ten, I guess that'll be okay. Beth squealed in delight, leaving me more worried than ever. Beth might just decide to tell everyone who I was. But her mom told her in no uncertain terms that she was not, under any circumstance, to tell anyone who I really was, or she would really regret it. Beth swore that she wouldn't do that, and a bit later mom and I went home with a promise that she would drop me off at six that night. I didn't know it at the time, but that was the day that would begin my very rapid descent into the world of girls. When we got home, mom took me to my room and had me take off my blouse and bra, then she cleaned my chest with something that smelled like alcohol. Since you wore the bra last night, and it's obvious that those girls think that you are a girl, I think maybe we should do everything possible to make sure they never find out the truth, don't you? They would kill me if they found out mom. That's why I bought this. It's a glue of sorts. It will let me attach the breast forms to your chest, and after I do, you would be able to go brawless if you had to. Can I do it? I nodded my head yes. Now hold still so I can get these positioned just right. I just could not do anything that would give me away, which is why I agreed to let mom glue the boobs to my chest. I stood there looking down as mom attached them, and when she was done pushing them tight and making the seam stick down, it looked like I had grown boobs of my own. Satisfied, she told me to get dressed. Just having the boobs stuck on my chest made it possible for me to feel it whenever they bounced or I pushed against them, and in a way, I was sort of glad, if for no other reason than I wouldn't be found out so easily. I ate a little early, then mom took me back to Beth's around five that afternoon. Beth grabbed my arm, and we walked out back and sat on the swings. Damn girl! You look great! I guess, I'm still getting used to everything, so don't let on tonight or I'll be dead. They didn't act like they knew did they? Forget it! Just be a girl tonight and we'll have a great time, you'll see, maybe you'll find something you like, you never know. When Lisa and Carol arrived, Beth's mom took us to the mall, letting us out with stern warnings about boys and what time and where she would pick us up. Just the thought of boys seeing me made me feel ill, but the rest of them loved the idea, and giggling, they pulled me along with them into the mall. We looked at everything from skirts and dresses, high heels and jewelry, fancy lingerie and nice coats to the boys of course. Lisa was the biggest flirt, and always managed to have the guys looking at her. Like myself, Carol was very subdued, while Beth was sort of like a cheerleader. Carol never showed much interest in the boys, until she saw him. There he is. He's walking this way. Who? I asked. Robert. Tits out girls, Beth said quickly, and smile. It was all I could do to stand there smiling. Robert and his friend walked up to us. I have to admit that his smile radiated charm, and when I saw him looking at Carol and not me, I relaxed a little. His friend was standing next to me as Bob and Carol talked, then I felt a nudge. Hi, he said softly, I don't believe we have met. I'm Wally. Um, I'm Kathy? God, I thought to myself, I was starting to sound like a girl. We were going to get some sodas, maybe. We were too, Beth said quickly. Well, Lisa and Beth walked together, Bob and Carol, which left Wally and I. I saw Beth spin her head around, look right at me, and smiled. I knew what that meant. She had already told me that I was cute, and with Wally walking beside me, it was plain that he thought so too. 
We all sat at two tables we shoved together, and while the other girls were talking and giggling, I sat there wondering just how I was going to get away with what I was doing. I mean, the way Wally was looking at me gave me the willies. He thought I was a girl, and was doing his very best to let me know he was interested. The fact that I knew all of his lines aside, it was flattering in a way, although I couldn't admit that, even to myself. The guys wandered off after a half hour or so, leaving us to finish walking the mall. As we walked along, Wally likes you, Carol said. He would be a good one to catch Kathy, he's really cute. Lisa sounded envious. Did you give him your number? Beth was grinning. No. You know that dad doesn't let me date. It was the best excuse I could come up with. Let's go in there. Lisa was pointing at a dress shop. Since they charged in there like an invading army, I followed them inside. Carol was the first one to try on a dress, and when she stepped out of the booth it was obvious that she had taken her bra off. Beth grabbed a similar dress and did the same, then Lisa. I stood there looking around, floundering a bit at the sight of real boobs when Carol handed me a dress and told me that I might as well make it a foursome. With the dress in my hand and my mouth not working, Beth spoke up. Oh, I don't think that Carol could wear that. She was protecting me. But she did not know that I had some very lifelike breasts glued on my chest. That's when I saw the anticipation on Lisa and Diane's faces and said it was okay. Sure, I'll try it on. Why not? I removed my clothes, including the bra, put the dress on, and stepped out, right in front of Beth. Showing off I guess, I bent down to tug the hem of the dress, which let her, Lisa and Carol see right down the dress, which meant they saw that I had breasts. Nobody but Beth was shocked of course, and with a certain silly smugness, I went back in the booth and changed clothes. I had done it to show Beth that I had boobs, but the added result was that both Lisa and Carol now had absolutely no reason to think that I was anything but a girl, and it also meant that they also saw no reason not to push Wally and I together, which Lisa did, several times before we were picked up outside the mall. Giving credit where it's due, Beth never once let on in any way that I was not a real girl, but she had a ton of questions, that much was plain. We dropped off Carol and Lisa at their homes, then Beth asked if I could stay the night. But Kathy isn't a. Yes she is, now she is anyway. I'll call and ask, but you two change clothes in separate rooms. Mom. We're cousins. That's the only reason I'll even consider it. I'll call when we get home. Mom said it was okay, so Beth and I went to her bedroom. Handing me a nightgown, she was all grins. Tell me. I have to know. How did you get those boobs of yours? Are they real? No. They can't be. Tell me. Let me see. Still pumped up with joy that I had managed to fool Lisa and Carol, I pulled up my top and released the bra, showing Beth my new boobs. We heard her mom coming, so I straightened out, took the nightgown and went into the bath to change clothes, returning wearing only the panties underneath. Beth and I sat watching television and eating popcorn while her mom went to her sewing room. Wally really did seem to like you. Yeah, maybe, but it won't do him any good. I'll be back to myself in five weeks, remember? You sure about that? Sure. Why not? That's what mom and dad both said. Well, he is kind of cute, so I thought. No, Beth. Don't. I'm in deep enough as it is. Then why did you show off tonight? Show off? Letting us all see that you have boobs. I don't know. You said I couldn't wear that dress, which made it sound like I couldn't or something. I just wanted to show you that I can wear anything you can. Besides, Lisa and Carol both saw me, and now they think I'm a girl, don't they? And isn't that the idea? So nobody will know? The guy I like was there tonight, but all he did was look at Carol. Who? I asked Robert. I think he's hot hot hot. I'll bet the only way you get him is to force yourself on him Beth. Not with Carol around I won't. Who do you like? Boys I mean. None. What are you? Nuts? Come on. You're supposed to be a girl now, so why not think like one? Tell me the truth Kathy, which guy do you think is really cute? I hadn't thought of it, but, maybe. 
Glenn, I suppose. He's nice enough, I guess. Glenn Grant? He's really shy, Kathy. Cute, but shy. He'll never make a move on you. You'll have to be the one to make the first move if you want him to notice you. Me? No chance, Beth. Well, see, won't we? You were acting so much like a girl tonight that I almost forgot you weren't. Heck. Your voice hasn't changed yet, and you even talk and sound like we do. Maybe you like being a girl a lot more than you're saying. I said no, but shrugged my shoulders, unwilling to admit that she might be right. Then her mom came in and told us to be quiet and go to bed. I was drained from the excitement of our outing, and even though I slept in a sleeping bag on the floor, I was out like a light quickly. In the morning we both went to breakfast in our nightgowns, which was the first time my aunt saw that I didn't need a bra. As we ate, she calmly mentioned that my mom had called and wanted me to call her back, so after we were done, I called home. Dad answered the phone, heard it was me, and abruptly gave the phone to mom. For some reason he sounded angry. Kathy? Remember that nice boy we saw at the mall? Well, he called here yesterday. He said his name was Glenn, and that he looked up our number in the phone book. He wanted to talk to you, but I told him you were out shopping with some girlfriends. He called again just a few minutes ago, and when I told him you spent a sleepover with Beth, he told me he lived close enough to Beth's house that he would catch up with you there. Your father answered the first phone call, honey. He can't understand why this boy called you, so I had to explain to him that Glenn thinks you're a girl. He's just not used to having boys call the house, I guess. Put Darlene on the phone. I handed the phone over to my aunt, heard a few grunts, saw her smile, then she hung up and told Beth and I to get dressed, except that she told me that I could borrow a pair of shorts from Beth as well as a top. Beth gave me the tan shorts with a light green top to wear, and after I did my makeup, she worked on my hair, leaving it down with a pair of barrettes holding it away from my face. When we were both ready, we went to the family room. Beth had not asked me what mom wanted, so she didn't know until Aunt Darlene said that we should wait on the porch for my guest. Of course, Beth was instantly alert, and by the time we got outside, was pestering me to tell her who my guest was going to be. Believe me, I did not want to say who, but didn't have to, since Glenn turned the corner and was headed straight for us. Beth realized who it was, and poked me in the ribs. You little snit. You didn't tell me. I didn't know until when mom called. Honest. Hi Beth, he said first, then. I'm Glenn Grant. I saw you at the mall the other day. Hi. This is Kathy. Hi Kathy. Hi. Mom said that you called yesterday? Yeah. I saw you with your mom and wanted to meet you. I didn't know what to say, but Beth did. Kathy and I have some stuff to do, maybe you could come back later? About four? Sure, I can do that. Nice to meet you Kathy, and I'll see you later today? Almost as soon as he walked away, Beth started in on me about his finding me. I'll bet that the only way he could have found you is if he recognized your mom. Then he looked up your number and called. And he heard you call her mom. Do you know what that means? No, what? It means that he thinks a girl named Kathy lives at your house. If he found the phone number, he also knows where you live. What happens, say, a few months from now? If he comes to your house? As much as I was struggling not to let this girl thing get away from me, I could not help but realize that Beth was right. As nice a guy as Glenn was, how long would that last if he found out that I wasn't a girl? He would spread the word, and I would find myself without any friends at all. Just about the only thing that made me feel good at all was that someone other than family thought I was pretty. Deep down, in places I didn't want to visit, I knew without any doubt that I was starting to like being a girl. The attention, the things girls do together, the clothes, and even the way Glenn looked at me, all made me feel like I thought a girl would feel. I still felt a little awkward, but there was no way I could say that I wasn't beginning to like being a girl. I never had a girl look at me like Glenn did, and those were scary thoughts, and the fact that Glenn was showing interest in me really threw me. Never having been attracted to guys, I was uneasy with the thought of Glenn wanting to know me better, 
yet knowing that did not reduce the growing fear that my starting to like dressing as a girl might become more than I could handle. I felt as if I were being sucked into a spiral that I could not get off of, and just maybe, I didn't want to. Aunt Darlene drove me home, with Beth right beside me. As we walked in I saw Dad scowling at me. He didn't say anything, so I went to my room with Beth close behind. You could say that I felt glum, knowing that whatever happened when Glenn came over, I would be in a very serious fix. If he saw me as Kathy, then he would always expect to see me as Kathy. If I refused to see him and my parents backed me up, he would wonder what was going on and start asking around. Either way he might find out that I was really a boy. But if I did meet him as a girl I might just be able to deflect his interest a bit longer. I couldn't say that I liked being a girl, not to anyone, especially Beth, but she said that she already knew, and telling mom or dad was out of the question since I knew what dad would do. I sat on the bed while Beth sat on the chair, neither of us speaking. Then my mom came in. Beth, could you excuse us please? I think that Kathy and I have to talk. Sure. I'll be downstairs. Your mother is waiting for you Beth. Kathy can call you later. After Beth left. We didn't plan on this, Mom said softly, but we have a dilemma, don't we? Yeah. Glenn. He thinks I'm a girl. We only wanted you to see what it's like being a girl honey, we never intended, or even thought that this might happen, but to be honest with you, we also never thought that you would look the way you do either. I have been watching you carefully the last few days, and you have not only started to act like a girl, you're even starting to talk like one, and now that you have some friends that are girls, just between us, tell me. You like being a girl, don't you? I looked up at mom, then suddenly burst into tears. Mom had guessed the truth and I was unable to say that she was right. It's okay honey, you don't have to say it, as long as we both know the truth, okay? I nodded my head yes. The big question right now is what do we do? Isn't it? I managed to squeak out on word. Dad. Then. Don't you, didn't you, like me as a boy? Is that why you're so, that that you want me to be a girl? Because I screwed up so much? That's not true and you know it. You are my child, and I'll always love you, no matter what, and what you wear has no bearing on it. Clothes do not define us honey, unless we let it happen. You listen to me young lady, mom said, taking my chin in her hand. I know this is all new for you, but it's new for us as well. After I saw how you were acting, I did a little research, and do you know what I found out? That boys that find out they like to dress as girls, even if they didn't know it before, virtually always want to continue dressing as girls. I know that you didn't want to do this at first, but it's a plain as day that you found out you like it. There's nothing wrong with that, and as long as we find his way to live with this change, we'll all be okay, but your father is very confused right now, probably even more than you. When Glenn called he didn't know what to say or do, because like me, he never considered the fact that a boy might find you attractive enough to call. But now that it's happened, we're all facing a difficult decision, aren't we? I know that we said that you had to be a girl for five weeks, but we will rescind that right now, this instant if you want, or, you and I can do exactly what I said. We can make you as feminine as possible and maybe let you meet that boy Glenn. But after that, if you do let him come over I mean, can you see any way that you can go back to being a boy? It might be difficult especially after spending time with a boy who thinks you're a girl named Kathy. Honey, if you like being a girl, and maybe even want to keep on being a girl, then you'll have to let your father know won't you? I think the only way to let your father know how you feel is for you to become as feminine as you can possibly be, including how you talk, walk, act, dress, all of the things a normal girl your age would be like. You can tell him by your actions, and hopefully he'll figure it out on his own. However, I'm telling you that you can quit right now, or you can continue, that will be your choice, but if you want to keep dressing as a girl, then your father certainly has to know that. There isn't any way you cannot tell him, and you know that. If that's going to be your choice, to keep on dressing this way, then I want you to tell me that first. Mom, I didn't mean for it to happen. It just did. 
I can't help it, but I can't, waddle everyone say. I heard Beth mention that you tried on a dress without a bra. Were the other girls there? Yeah, we all tried one on without a bra. Beth sort of made me do it. And how did she do that? Are you a robot? She said that I couldn't do it. She made it sound like I couldn't do anything without your permission. I see. So, you and the other girls went out trying on dresses, just like teenage girls everywhere? If I didn't. Without a bra? That means that the other girls believe you have boobs like they do, right? Yeah, but. Do you, or do you not, want to keep dressing as a girl honey? It sounds to me like you do. I, I guess, I don't know for sure. But what about dad? If I do he'll hate me. No, he won't hate you, he won't like it, and he'll have some trouble digesting it, but he doesn't think this is going to last more than five weeks, so let's not tell him how you feel right now. Let's make it obvious by just concentrating on making you as feminine as we can instead. I sat there staring into space, not focusing on anything in particular, it was all up to me. One part of me was screaming for me to go back to being a boy and reclaim my pitiful masculinity, while another part was yelling at me to keep dressing up and see where it led me. I was unable to decide until I saw the green dress in the closet. It represented a future I had not planned on and never expected, but after less than a week as a girl, I felt as if I had discovered something fantastic about myself, something that was better than anything else I had ever experienced. I didn't have a choice, so, glancing at mom, I got up and walked to the closet, took the dress out, and held it up. Knowing full well what the question would mean, I asked, Will this do? Mom slowly nodded her head yes, and I undressed, heading for the bath and a shower. That water ruined my hair, but I felt as if the water was washing away lots of my fears and doubts. I scrubbed carefully, then went back into my room wearing only a towel. Mom was still there, but she had set out some things for me to wear. I slipped on the clean panties, for the first time tucking myself carefully so that I looked more like a girl, then she and I went into her bedroom where I used the new makeup she had bought for me. With a desire that was all new to me I began my makeup all by myself. After foundation and powder, I used the pale blue eyeshadow with just a little gray over that and used the sponge to draw it out a bit. Mom watched as I used the black eyeliner and pencil to outline my eyes, then mascara, the first time I had tried using it. Pale peach blusher was next, and Mom started on my hair, using the blow dryer. She left my hair loose and I went back to my room to get dressed. Use this honey. It'll make your waist a little smaller. I took the waist cincher wrapped it around myself and fastened the hooks up the front, then pulled on the padded panty brief and pantyhose before I put on a bra. Then I put the dress on and mom zipped it up for me. I looked at mom and couldn't suppress a grin. You know, when I used to wear dresses like that, I would kind of pull my boobs up in the bra. It made me look fuller, which was a big deal for me. I was also an A cup like you when I was your age. I did what she said, straightening the straps of the dress so my bra straps were covered, then I stepped into the black flats and went to the bath, took the brush, and brushed out my hair so that it fell straight down, only the ends curly. Then mom added a barrette on each side. Are you sure about this, Kathy? I mean, it's not too late to change, I can tell Glenn that you left. No, mother. I have to know, don't I? Don't you? Look at me. Then tell me this is wrong. It's only wrong if you think it's wrong. Do I like it that my son looks like a beauty queen? Or wants to be a girl? Not particularly, but I can face the fact that it looks to me that even if we forced you to stop right now, you would probably just get dressed up whenever you could anyway. At least this way we have some control, and if this is what you want, then you finish getting dressed while I go talk to your father. We'll be in the family room. I added the gold hoop earrings with the small heart necklace and the gold bracelet, then some of the perfume mom gave me. Looking in the mirror, the girl I had become was about to tell her father that the son he always knew had become his daughter, hopefully without words. In my wildest dreams I never thought that after only a week as a girl that I would not only feel this way, but I would be admitting it to my dad by the way I dressed. In a moment of inspiration, I went into mom's closet and took her gold belt, wrapped it around myself, 
then pulled the dress up a little, letting it blouse out over the belt some. The hem was at mid-thigh on me while the belt accented my newly smaller waist. Pleased with myself, I added the plum lipstick, took one last look, and opened the door, I was about to face my father, show him I wanted to be a girl, and hoped that he would not fly off the handle, which was my worst fear. My steps were quiet on the carpeting, then I stopped short, took a deep breath, and quickly went into the family room. He was sitting in his chair. Looking up at me, he did not smile. His eyes roamed from head to toe, taking in my modest cleavage, narrow waist and long legs, plus my hair and makeup. Then he spoke. Your mother tells me that you have decided to go all out on this being a girl thing. Do you have something to tell us? Me? Is it about that boy? The one that called here? Dad. You know. I'm sure that I do. I just want to hear it from you. I, I'm, I'm just being a girl, just like you told me I had to. I see, he said calmly, and I suppose this going all out has something to do with that young man that called yesterday? Not really, but you yourself told me to do my best, which is all I did, what I'm doing. I didn't think that you were that way. About boys I mean. It's not like that dad. He thinks I'm a girl. I never, what I mean is, I'm not. What she means, mom said quickly, is that until we insisted that she dress this way, she didn't know how she looked as a girl, but we can all see that Kathy has turned out to be quite pretty, and of course, boys are attracted to girls like Kathy. So it's perfectly natural for her to react the way she has, and it isn't at all like you're suggesting. I guess I know all that, dad said, but why did you say yes to letting that young man come over here? Couldn't you figure out that the minute he comes here and sees you, he'll expect to always find you here? And if you're not interested in boys, which I'm sure that you're not, then. Just how could she have said no? Mom asked, for goodness sake. He saw her with me at the mall, then at Beth's house, right after I had told him that she had spent a sleepover with Beth. He already thinks she's a girl, and I doubt that he is going to change his mind. He thinks she's pretty enough to meet us. So what does that tell you? That this is getting out of hand. Just what do you suggest? Mom asked in an exasperated tone of voice. That we hide her? We could make her drop this. But aren't we the ones that insisted on five weeks, right? Dad was in a pickle. If he said that I had to change, it would undermine his authority. And if he let me meet with Glenn, he knew as well as I did that making me disappear might be even harder. If we let you do this, meet this boy I mean, then you should be aware that your life is going to get very complicated around here in a very short time, you do know that don't you? We have other family that will have to know what's going on, and what if this gets really out of hand? What if you dig yourself in so deep that you can't get out? What about school? What about the rest of your friends? Just what did you plan on doing about that? I, I, hadn't thought of that. I felt myself on the verge of crying, only managing to hold it back long enough to sit next to mom. Why, mom said quickly, don't we take this one step at a time? Let's not make any hasty decisions right now, let's wait for a while and see how this works out. Maybe Glenn and Kathy won't hit it off. You stay home, and I mean it. You are not to go anywhere with this boy. Unless we say it's okay, mom added, much to dad's chagrin. Why I was putting myself through all that I still don't know, and the thought of having Glenn come to the house was making me rethink every single thing I ever learned. I had been raised as a boy not a girl, yet after just a few days, almost a week as a girl, there I was, excited about the fact that I was, for all intents, a girl, with a boy coming to see me. I was pacing the floor when mom pulled me into the kitchen and told me to stop, then told me to sit at the table. Waiting was very hard because I still wasn't sure if he knew who I really was, or if he was attracted to me as a girl. About twenty minutes later the doorbell rang and I jumped up to get it. No. You wait here. Let your father get the door. He'll call you. That way you can make an entrance. A moment later. Kathy, it's for you. I gathered myself, glanced at mom, then pulled my shoulders back and walked into the front hall. Glenn was standing there, staring right at me. 
I saw him smile, look down shyly, then I quickly introduced him to my parents and took him on the back patio, sitting at the lone table. Your mom said you had a sleepover with Beth? Yeah. We went shopping and stayed out late, so. I like Beth, he said. She said you're new here? Yeah, not too long ago. She told me that you're related? We're cousins I could tell. You two look a lot alike. Well, Beth told me that you're really shy. She said that you never ever called a girl before. Why me? We hardly know each other. I don't. I thought you were, you're different. I feel as if we've known each other a long time I guess, and besides, Beth told me that you were also real shy, so I thought why not. We sat there not speaking for a moment, those awkward boy-girl moments taking over, then he casually asked me if I wanted to take a walk. Beth's isn't that far away, we could walk over there. I'll have to ask. My dad is real possessive. He might say no, but I'll ask. I went inside, saw mom, and asked her, but she told me I had heard what dad said, adding that it was up to him, so I went to find him. He as in his office. Daddy? He looked up. Glenn wants to take a walk. Over to Beth's house. I told him I had to ask. Can I? Beth's. That's a long way, isn't it? He lives close to her, and he walked over here, didn't he? It isn't that far. After a moment. Okay, I guess you can go to Beth's, but nowhere else, understand? If I call over there, they'd better be able to put you on the phone. Is that clear? It was. I grabbed my purse, told Glenn it was okay, and we started walking towards Beth's. He never reached for my hand or put his arm around my waist, nothing, until we were almost at Beth's. Then he reached out and took my hand in his. As we turned the corner towards Beth's house, I fussed with my purse so she wouldn't see us holding hands, but it was too late. Lisa walked up behind us, then beside me. Hi. Hi, Lisa. This is Glenn? Yeah, I know. We go to school together. Hi, Glenn. We reached Beth's, and I went on the porch and rang the bell. Beth bounced out the door, all grins when she saw Glenn standing there. We all said hi then sat on the front porch. Lisa was the one to mention it of course. Her incessant flirting had not yet resulted in anything, while my really scared and very shy demeanor had caused Glenn to call me, not once, but twice. Well, it looks like little Miss Innocent here isn't so innocent. What? Glenn asked. He didn't have any idea what Lisa meant. Nothing Glenn, Lisa is just jealous, that all. Beth gave Lisa a nudge when she said it. That's when he finally got it I think. We all sat there just talking for a while, maybe an hour or so, then my dad called. He was checking to make sure I was there, but also to tell me we were going out to dinner that night, and he would pick me up. Glenn squeezed my hand when he left, then Lisa wandered away, knowing that Beth and I were going inside. Beth really wanted to ask me about Glenn, but wouldn't as long as her mother was around, so we watched a little television, then my parents showed up and I left. The next week went by quickly, and I began to be more like a girl than any of us imagined. With only another month to go, I began to dread my return to being a boy. It was during that week that I decided to see what it was like, and wore a sanitary napkin for the whole week. It made me feel as if I were closer to being a girl, although having a lump in my panties also made me feel like I wasn't hiding things very well. Beth, Lisa, Carol and I spent time together almost every day, which gave me a really good insight on the way girls think and act. Dad took us to dinner a few more times, but when he took Mom and I out on Thursday of the third week, my life changed dramatically. I had casually mentioned that Carol was having a birthday party and had asked me to come, but it was two weeks after I was supposed to stop. That's when it got tense. That's the best way to describe dinner. My dad kept staring at me, his face changing from undisguised dislike to dismay. Then the minute we got home, it happened. This is over. I want you to change clothes. Your days as a girl are over. Shocked. I almost said something, but mom spoke up first. She can't. What do you mean? She can't. I said it's over. We all heard you, dear, but, well, 
those breast forms I bought for her? They are glued on, and taking them off before the adhesive breaks down enough can severely damage her skin. We'll just have to wait for that to happen, which means that she can hardly go back to being a boy, not with those she can't. What? Dad almost yelled. This is getting out of hand here. All this was supposed to be was a chance for our son to learn how to keep his thoughts to himself, not this. How could you do that? Not only do we have a boy calling our house to talk to her, now you're telling me that regardless of what we want, she has to remain? I told you this would happen, didn't? This was supposed to be punishment, not A. That's true, it was supposed to be an object lesson, but… But what? What could be more important than our teaching him a lesson? Kathy found out that she likes being a girl honey. Just look at her. Is there any sign that she is our son? Nobody, including Kathy, expected this, but it did happen, and you cannot deny it. You've seen her every day for three weeks, so tell me, has she acted, looked, talked, or even sounded like a boy in that whole time? No. That's because Kathy likes being a girl and while she hasn't said it, it's so obvious she doesn't want to give it up that I am surprised you can't figure it out. I did not raise my son to be a girl. That is also true, but you know perfectly well that we cannot change human nature, especially after someone finds out what they thought was true wasn't even close. Kathy thought that women were here only to make men happy, but now she knows that isn't true, she now knows it's a lot more than that, and we simply can't change how she feels. Yes, you can make her change clothes, but I'm willing to bet that all she would do is start dressing up when we weren't around, and just how much control do you think you'll have then? Dad looked right at me, a scowl on his face, then. Is this all true? I looked at Mom, then nodded my head yes. Damn it, he said rather harshly. My son the... Girl, Mom finished the sentence for him. Like I said, it was very tense, but it was out. Dad finally knew that I liked being a girl, but I felt like a traitor in a lot of ways. The way he looked at me made me feel like something stuck to the bottom of your shoe, but there was no way I could take back anything that was said. Mom had told him, not me, which left me with no way to defend or explain myself, even if I knew how. The mere fact that it had been said was more than enough to make Dad angry at me, leaving me to suffer the brunt of what I knew was going to be his growing anger. We all sat there silently suffering in our own thoughts, then. If what you say is true, Dad said, and you knew this, then why didn't you tell me? I had a right to know. Because neither Kathy or myself were sure until a few days ago, that's why. Mom sounded exasperated. But you had an inkling, didn't you? Did that boy coming over have something to do with this? I mean, I didn't think he was like that. You know better than to say something like that. And yes, we had an inkling as you put it, but that boy had nothing at all to do with what is going on, and to say that any attraction occurred before Kathy showed up is just plain silly and you know it. Just what did you plan on telling everyone? That our son is now our daughter? Do you have any idea what the consequences will be? I've thought about it, yes, but our only concern right now has to be Kathy. Maybe we can work something out. Maybe she can finish the summer as a girl, attend school as a boy, and we let her visit now and then? Dad sat there a moment, then. No. I can't see that working at all. Just about the time we say it's okay to play dress up, something will happen, like my boss stopping by, or a good friend of mine, yours or hers. And what about those girls she has been hanging out with? What about them? How do we explain it to them? Or that boy, Glenn? And what about the rest of family? No, I cannot see that working at all. This is just terrible. Having a daughter is not so terrible. It just seems to me that the only obvious solution is to just accept that we have a daughter now, then work out the problems as they come up. Dad clearly didn't like that option, but he himself had said that by making me stop would bring unwanted scrutiny, which left him almost no choices, except two. He could let me keep dressing as a girl and do his best to make everyone think I was really a girl, or he could make me change back and not only take the flack, but make me suffer whatever else might happen. He stared at me for a long time while he thought about everything, then he finally spoke up. 
since you tell me we have to wait for that glue to break down, we'll wait, which I suppose, means that you can attend that party your friend is having, but the minute that it's possible, I want you to get out of those clothes and be yourself. We'll deal with whatever happens. Don't forget that big party that started all this, Kathy will need a new dress for that, and of course, another trip to the beauty shop. After that, maybe. Okay. Do what you have to, but after that, Kathy becomes Tom again. I was crushed, and ran to my room, slamming the door after myself. Finding out that you wanted to be something different and being able to do it for a while was terrific, but when it's yanked away like that, well, I was totally dismayed and very angry with my dad. I undressed until I was standing there in nothing but my panties, all sign of my manhood safely tucked away so I looked just like the girl I wanted to be. Just a moment later my dad came in the room without knocking and saw me like that. Not caring anymore, I turned to face him. His face was turning red. I think he was embarrassed to see me like that. Put something on. Why? I don't have anything you haven't seen before. Do as I tell you. Put a robe or something on, and stop using that tone with me. Yeah, whatever. Tell me why. Why what? Why, all of a sudden, you have decided that you want to be a girl of course. You make it sound as if I just decided. Well, I didn't. It just sort of happened. But you really want to become a girl? Do you know what that means? Yeah. I would wear skirts instead of pants. No. I mean, what happens when you start? What if we let you? What if a boy becomes interested in you? So? I wouldn't do anything, not what like you're thinking anyway. But eventually that time would come, what then? By then maybe I would be a real girl, with my own boobs and all. Women do a lot of things for men you know, and I'm wondering how you'll feel when you have to work, clean house, do laundry, the shopping and all that, plus the rest of the things they do for men. It's not always about makeup, hair and clothes you know. He flopped on the bed staring at me. Those look real enough to me, are you used to them? Having them in the way I mean. They're not in the way dad. They're just there, but they also feel real too. Want to feel? No. I do not want to feel them. I'll just take your word for it. I don't like this one bit. You know that don't you? I nodded my head yes. And there will probably be lots of trouble about it when you go back to school? Another nod yes. So we have a dilemma don't we? But you said that I had to. As a girl you would have a whole new set of rules you know. An earlier curfew for example, and more duties around the house. We would also expect you to be the girl you say you want to be, 100% of the time, without any failure on your part of any kind. Whatever problems you have will have to be solved by you, and we will expect that you'll only ask for help only when you absolutely need it. Is all that clear? Yes sir, but does that mean that, what does that mean? It means that you have from now until school starts to prove to me that being a girl is exactly right for you. If you can do that, then we'll go on from there. But I don't want to hear any more doors slamming, sassy back talk, or sarcastic tones from you. If you can do that, then we'll try it, but that's all it is, a trial. Now, go to bed. It's late. I was so stunned that I didn't say a word, just watching as he left my room. My dad had just made an about face, telling me that I could be a girl. The very next morning mom and I went back to the salon where I had my hair and nails done again. That's also about when mom and I ordered a special kind of panty for me. It made me look like a girl all over, and only increased the number of things I could wear. I went to Kathy's party, attended by kids that all knew me, except they didn't. Lisa was flirting of course, Carol managed to get Bob's attention, Beth was being cornered by a guy named Nate, while I was staying with Glenn. I also went to that big deal party that started all this, wearing a beautiful lilac gown that was all satin and lace, escorted by my father of course. I even danced with him a few times. Of course I started at a different school, but as Kathy, and was accepted as a girl by everyone. I dated Glenn a few times but generally stayed unattached. After graduation the real lessons began, because that's when I started on the road to being a real woman. 
I can hardly wait.